So, welcome again for this uh, lesson or the next episode about in science. Today we are going to look at uh, the topic animals. This topic runs all through from standard one to standard eight. And today we are going to look at what you call standard six work, standard e six work. The standard six work about animals, we learn about two things, or three things, sorry. Standard six work, we learn about three things. One, you look at animal feeds. Two, you look at the grazing methods of animals. Then three, you look at the balanced diet for the animals. So for today, we are going to start with what you call animal feeds. And when you check this topic from standard six work, that is primary science, it runs all through from page that two up to that eight. It's a very short topic that we are going to cover today. So animal feeds here, animals just like human beings, they also need to eat so that they can have energy either for growth, for high production, and also to protect themselves from diseases. So animal feeds here, they are classified as they are uh, grouped. They are grouped into uh, a. You have what you call pasture. We have what you call pasture, and then number B, we have what you call fodder feeds. Fodder feeds, and then number C, we have what you call conserved feeds, conserved feeds, conserved feeds. Then number D, we have what you call as concentrates, concentrates, concentrates. Concentrates are also known as commercial feeds, also called commercial feeds, commercial feeds. So, those are the types of animal feeds. As I've said, they are grouped into pasture. We have fodder feeds or fodder crops, if you want. You can call it fodder feeds or fodder crops. We also have what you call conserved feeds. Then we have last what you call concentrates, which are also known as commercial feeds. So, straight away we start on this but before we start on this let me enlighten you these questions do come in exam kcp like if you check from the old runaway from 2009 up to 2019 we have had around nine questions all through at least they bring one question or two questions like if you check that of 2009 kcp question 13 they'll ask you a question about Lucerne. The question was, the type of nutrients found in the Lucerne is which type? And the other was which one? Proteins. And many other questions. Let's start from pasture. Pasture. Pasture is an animal feed that is made or is that piece of land set aside pasture if you can uh, explain what is it, pasture is a piece, a piece of land set aside, set aside with the grass or legumes or both, or both for animals to feed on, or both for animals animals to feed on that's what you call pasture then this one here example because i've talked about grass i've talked about legumes i've talked about both for the grass here let us start with what you call examples of who? grasses examples of grasses examples of grasses 
we have what you call nandi ceteria nandi ceteria you also have what you call the kikuyu pras kikuyu pras we have Guatemala grass Guatemala grass we also have what you call star grass and many others that you can name those are examples of the grasses found under pasture but you have more then when you come to example of legumes animal leguminous feeds which are under pasture animal animal leguminous feeds leguminous feeds we have uh, what you call as uh, lucerne lucerne which was asked in kcp 2009 question 13. we also have what you call clover we also have what you call as desmodium and then lastly we have what you call glycine glycine so those are examples of animal leguminous feeds and these ones here you find that um, some of them may be under pasture and some will fall under what you call conserved feeds not if the piece of land or a pasture is purely made of grass or purely made up of legumes is known as a single stand so if the pasture is purely if the pasture is purely purely made up of either made up of either grasses or legumes only is called single stand is called single stand single stand feeds single stand feeds however if the pasture is made up of is comprised of a mixture of pasta and legumes is called mixed stand however if the pasture the pasture is made up of both is made up of both grasses and legumes grasses and legumes then it will be called mixed stand then it will be called mixed stand mixed stand so those we find about um, pasture let's come to what we call fodder fodder crops or fodder feeds for the animals these ones are the type of feed that uh, you harvest the plants from the farm and then you take the animals for feeding on. So let's look at it in detail. We have, uh, sorry, we have number, this was number A, then you come to number B. That's what you call as fodder feeds or also you can call it fodder crops so as i've said fodder feeds these are animal feeds are animal feeds harvested from the farm harvested from the farm and given to animals these are animal feeds harvested from the farm and given given to animals given to animals either in zero grazing 
or rotational. Then examples of fodder, examples of fodder feeds, it's fodder feeds. We have what you call as uh, the first one will be nebia grass is the best. Nebia grass is the best among these fodder feeds. Number two, we have what you call as uh, Lusan. We have Lusan. You also have what you call as um, glycine. We have glycine. This part is why. Glycine. We also have what you call as clover. We have potato vines potato vines. We also have what you call as maize stalks. Maize stalks. We also have Guatemala grass, Nand ceteria, and many others that you can name. They fall under this group of fodder feeds. The key word is the fodder feeds here, animals do not feed on them direct in the farm. However, as a farmer, you can't harvest, cut them, then you give to the animals, either in the uh, stalls, that's in zero grazing, or whether it may be under patoking method or under strip method. So that's what we call fodder feeds. Let's go to number C, which we call as um, number C, because we have talked about pasture, we have talked about um, fodder feeds. So let us come to what you call conserved feeds. And remember, conserved feeds may not turn the approach that question in exam, KCP, because it's very, very important part of it. That's number C. We come to what you call as conserved feeds. Conserved feeds. Which are the conserved feeds? Conserved feeds are the type of animal feeds you harvest from the farm, then you keep for future use. You harvest from the farm, then you keep so that animal will use it during the dry spell. That's what you call conserved feeds. And how many are they? Two. So first of all, these are, these are animal, animal feeds harvested from the farm harvested from the farm, prepared and kept, prepared and kept for future use, maybe during the dry spell. So examples. Examples of these ones, there are how many? Only two. We have what you call as the hay. One of them is called hay. And then number two, we have what you call silage. So there are only two, that is hay and silage. Very quickly, hay, it is prepared and kept when it dry. Hay is prepared and kept dry. Is prepared and kept kept dry in pairs so that's what you call hay then number two we have what you call as silage many times they like bring a question on silage on silage So a question on silage, uh, silage here, you find that um, it is prepared and kept in wet form of state. So silage is prepared and kept, kept in wet state word state whereby when they keep it it has some water in it it has some moisture so this silage here 
it is kept in silos. Is kept in silos. Is kept in silos. However, some people who don't have such structures, how do they keep them? They dig a hole in the ground, they lay down a pot and paper, maybe just to demonstrate. They may dig a hole like this in the ground, then they lay here a pot and paper, then they drop here the cut materials. For example, maize stalks, potato vines, or napier grass. After they have kept here all those things, they take this paper, they cover like this. After covering here, because the other things will be like this, they put here the soil, soil. So this one also can be used to keep or to store silage. The food which is kept here, you'll find that it remains in wet state or a moisture state. Then fine, you'll find that again, when you are keeping this silage, you need to compress it. Why should we compress silage in the silos? This is not a silo, but it's just a modified one by digging a hole in the soil. You place a pot and paper, you put the plant materials inside, then you cover. So why should we compress? We compress silage in the silo so that we can remove air. We compress silage in the silo to remove air. Another question may be, why should we remove air from the silage? We remove air from the silage so that we can do what? We can avoid it from fermenting, rotting. So, we can say this, that um, silage is compressed. Is compressed when kept. When kept in silos to remove air. To remove air. Next one. Why should we remove air from the silage? As I've said, we remove air. We remove air from from the silage to prevent to prevent rotting. To prevent rotting. So that's about silage. Remember, we have discussed about what you call. A, it was pasture, B, it was fodder feeds, C, it is conserved feeds, and conserved feeds we have seen that there are two, that is hay, silage. Let's go to number D, which is known as animal feeds we call as conditories. Conditories are animal feeds we buy from the shop, they are bought from the shop, which means they are prepared in the factories, and then they are sold. So we come to number D, which we call as animal, animal uh, commercial feeds, animal commercial feeds, feeds. So you find that one, they are also called conditrates, also called conditrates, also called conditrates. Two, you find that this type of animal feeds that are bought from the shop are manufactured are manufactured in factories in factories and sold and sold in shops that's what you call animal commercial feeds examples which are the examples of animal conditrates or commercial feeds there are many. We have what we call as dairy meal. Dairy meal. Two, we have chick mash. We have chick mash. And then three, we also have what we call as layer smash. Layer smash. Number four, we have what we call as uh, piglet pellets. Piglet pellets. We may also have what you call grass mash. Grass mash. And then number next one, we may also have what you call as calf pencil. Calf pencil. So it includes those and many others you may name. However, remember, animal commercial feeds, also known as conditors here, most of it is containing 
protein nutrients. Most of it contain protein nutrients, except just a few which may contain mineral salts. For example, dairy meal, chick mash, piglet pellets, cross mash, and calf pencil, they contain proteins. But layers mash contain mineral salts. Why? Because this one is given to chicken that lay eggs so that their egg shell may be strong. We go to number two, which we call as animal rotational grazing. Animal rotational grazing. Course number Roman one, we were talking about animal feeds. So you come to what you call as, this is Roman one. So you come to Roman two, which we call as animal rotational grazing. Animal rotational grazing. Rotational grazing. This uh, part here has been brought in exam many times. When you check in your KCP booklets, the year 2009, question 14, we had a question about rotational grazing. They asked a question that which of the following grazing methods is a rotational grazing? That's 2009, number 14. Same question was brought in 2016, number 20, about rotational grazing. It was again repeated in KCP, uh, 2013. Let's look at this. When you talk of animal grazing, uh, uh, sorry, I messed a bit. Animal grazing methods, sorry. Animal grazing methods. I wrote a wrong thing. Animal grazing methods. Animal grazing methods. So, this one, see, you find that the animal grazing methods here. There are how many? Three in groups. There are mainly three. One, we have, so there are three types. Types of animal grazing methods. Animal grazing methods. These are, we have what you call the herding method. Herding method. And then number two, we have what we call stall feeding. Stall feeding, which we also call as zero grazing. Zero grazing method. And then number three, we have what we call rotational grazing. Rotational grazing. So rotational grazing here, again, you'll find that it further divides into three groups. The way of styling that it comes in KCP, like that of 2009, question 14, and 2016, number 20. Let's start on what you call herding method. Herding method here. Herding method. When you start on herding method, herding method, this method here, is the one which is commonly used by many farmers, and in particular, those farmers who are the pastoralists. When I talk of pastoralists, I hope you understand. We have people like the Masais, Samburu, and if you go to South Africa, you have the Twana. If you go to West Africa, you have the Flani. When they move about with the animals as they graze, that method they use is what you call herding method. Like if you check in the, if you check in the KCP book, that's a question, uh, which year was that? That's 2013, the question which was asking about which of the following grazing method requires a large piece of land? The answer will be herding. That was the answer for that year, 2013. So what is herding? You can say herding, herding is a method of animal grazing, animal grazing that involve that involve animals to move about involve animals to move about as they graze on their own they can move 
kilometers and kilometers as they graze. Advantage is that they feed on the type of grasses or vegetation they want. So that, that's the most advantage for them. However, this, the most disadvantage of this method is that it requires a very big piece of land. Two, you cannot practice this method where you have many people. So it needs a place where there's a sparse group of people or settlement. So it involves animals, movement, movement as they grass. So the way I've just said, that uh, advantage is animal is able to feed on the type of grass or vegetation it requires or it wishes, but the disadvantage is that it requires a very big piece of land. Let's come to number B, which we call as stall feeding. Stall feeding, stall feeding. Stall feeding method here, uh, this one is practiced by people majorly who keep animals for milk. So these are, uh, for example, the dairy farmers. This is, uh, this is the method, method used, used by farmers who keep or rare, who keep or rare animals animals in built or constructed structures animals in constructed constructed structures constructed structures called stalls called stalls so that's why the same method we can also call it as zero grazing also known as zero grazing also known as zero grazing zero grazing the animals are kept in the house which is the main advantage of zero grazing or stall feeding the main advantage of zero grazing is this method ensures high production to the farmer the farm is going to get a lot of milk or pro produce from the animals kept in such a situation Two, another advantage is that it is good to be used where there are many people. It can be practiced in densely populated areas. Why do we say so? It requires a small piece of land. However, the main disadvantage of stall feeding is it's very expensive to start. Because one, you have to build the house. Two, you must have money to provide feeds. Animals will not be moving around, but you give the animal food, and that food must be bought. So that's the most disadvantage of stall feeding. Another disadvantage is that it requires skills. You cannot start stall feeding without any skill. At least you have some knowledge about this method. And then this one again is very tiresome. That's another disadvantage of stall feeding. Because as you are practicing, you are going to do a lot of work. So it's very tedious or tiresome. Let's come to number C, the method we call as a rotational grazing methods. Rotational grazing methods. Rotational grazing methods. So rotational, that's number C. Rotational, rotational grazing methods. Many times this is where the question comes in exam. Rotational grazing methods here, they are grouped into three. This method, this method involve, involve animals moving about as they feed but in a controlled manner this method involves animals moving about as they feed as they feed in a controlled state in a controlled controlled process what do we mean by this they are free to move yes but there is a certain limit they need to move about. Not like in the herding where they can move to anywhere they want. 
This method, they move yes, but in a very controlled state or process. Uh, they are grouped into two. It is grouped. Grouped into three, not two, into uh, three. One, we have what you call battle king methods. Battle king. And then number two, we also have what you call tethering method. Tethering method. And then number three, we have what you call the strip grazing. Strip grazing. That is now KCP. 2009 question 14 was this one strip grazing so these ones here they also have ways how they are done and how they differ so let's look at what you call buttocking in a very short in a very short way uh, buttocking here so when you start with the buttocking method buttocking method uh, one you find that uh, this method is carried out in a fenced farm with the subdivided sections is a method is a method practiced practiced by the farmer by the farmer in a fen in, in a permanently Permanently fenced and subdivided units. Permanently fenced, fenced and subdivided. Subdivided units, units called uh, buddocks. Now, this method here, you find that when the animals are feeding, they share, the, those uh, units share the water traps and feeding traps. So, the units, units share, majorly they share water traps, water traps. Maybe I can draw for that. If you have a very big piece of land like this one here, then this land is subdivided as follows. You find that they may subdivide like this and then they put in this manner. So that one is an example. The all fences which are seen here, they are permanent. Then in between here, we are going to have what you call the water, tra uh, water traps. These are what you call water traps. Water traps. And then you will have here small gates. Small gates to allow in animals or to allow out animals small gates like this small gates like this small gates like that so when animals are maybe feeding in this unit a they may move to unit b when the grasses are over in unit b they'll be moving to unit c so they continue moving in that manner as they come down like this Go like this, come this side, come this side, go there, and go there. So this one is what you call rotational grazing, whereby they move in small units, we call the buttocks, the way I've said here. This is now the D, E, F, G, and H. So as they move on like that, behind there, where they're coming from, the grass will be given time to grow. So that's why you say that the most another advantage of this is that the grasses or animal feeds are allowed to grow, so becoming more palatable. We come to number two, which you call as tethering method. Tethering method. Tethering method. Tethering method here is a method that um, a method that involves animals which are tight on the rock. The animals are tight on the rock. So that is um, tethering, tethering method. Tethering method 
is where an animal is tied with the rope and then the rope is tied right on the post or is tied on the peg. Is a method is a method where an animal an animal is tied is tied with the rope which is tied on a peg or post. So you found that this method here, the animal will be feeding in a circular area, which is also called circumference. So an animal an animal feeds in a circular area in a circular area then you find that this method is also uh, has an uh, has an, some advantage advantage of tethering is that one is better or is best to the farm with the few animals maybe one or two animals this method is the best but that's advantage that this method can cause what you call a dangling of animals because sometimes the animal can be moving about, then the rope can tie the neck and the animal can die. That's what we call as disadvantages of tethering method. Because the animal may be somewhere here, they tie here the rope, then the animal will be feeding in a circular manner like that. So when the animal is moving, I mean, uh, when being tied like this, going around in this manner, that's what we call rotational grazing, the method we call as tethering. This will be the peg here, and then this will be the animal. Animal feeding in a circular. Let's come to the last part, which we call as the strip grazing. Strip grazing is a method where strip grazing is a method where uh, animals are kept in fence structure, but the structure is not having all of it permanent. But some parts are. Uh, are temporary. So we have what you call as strip grazing. Strip grazing method. Strip grazing method here is where animals are kept. Animals are kept in a fenced a fenced structure structure with the temporary temporary fences temporary fence so this method here also you find sometimes they may say it's a method that is using a temporary fence a morphable fence or an electric fence so it is a method it's a method where where the subdividing fence, where the sub dividing fence is either a, a temporary, a temporary, or a morphable, or an electric fence, an electric fence. That's what you call as strip grazing methods. What is this? Maybe to show in a demonstration of a, a diagram, you'll find that um, a, fa a farm is like this for the farmer. Then you find that they say this part here, they subdivide like this. So the inner subdivided fence here or subdividing fence here is either a temporary one, moveable one, or an electric fence, which can be removed, then move to the next part. Then, so that's what we call as a temporary or moveable fence. This one is temporary, temporary fence. Also, we can call it 
electric fence whereby if the animals are feeding here when the grass is over they'll move this wire or that fence the next part they come here when the grass is over again they'll be allowed to move here and they move that fence so that manner is what you call as strip grazing methods as i started earlier i said that under standard six topic animals we are going to learn about three things i said one we learn about animal feeds which we have talked about two we learn about animal grazing methods now we are going to number three which we call as animal balanced diet because as i said uh, just like human beings animals also need to feed on food that is having all nutrients what am i saying we are going to go to number three and number three is what you call constituents of animal feeds constituents 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 of animal feeds animal feeds constituents of animal feeds whereby just like human beings animals also need to feed on type of uh, food that is having all types of nutrients so just like human beings human beings comma animals also need to feed need to feed on food rich in all nutrients all nutrients so these animal feeds we have just like that of human beings so examples of animal feed uh, examples of um, animal uh, balanced diet feeds that animal balanced diet feeds are we have what you call animals must feed on what you call proteins two animal must eat food which is rich in carbohydrates carbohydrates animals also need to feed on vitamins vitamins animals must be given food rich in mineral salts mineral salts mineral salts and then animals must be given water so that one makes about what you call the constituency of animal feeds or the balanced diet. So just in brief, let's look at this type of uh, uh, nutrients which animals get from this food. You'll find that um, we have what you call as, let me start with the proteins. Protein feeds. This one include Okay, this one they make animals to grow faster, two to high high production. So important of this is importance, important of this are one for faster growth, faster growth, and then number two for high production, for high production so those are the advantages of or importance of proteins so examples when you look at the examples of these animal feeds we have what you call as animal leguminous feeds when you talk of animal leguminous feeds here we have example lucerne desmodium clover and glycine we have uh, legumes when I talk of legumes, I have Lucerne, Desmodium, we have Glycine, and then you have Clover. Then number two, we also have what you call dairy meal. Dairy meal, 
we also have what you call as a cheek mash cheek mash we have cross mash cross mash then finishers meal finishers meal and many others you can name that are under proteins for uh, protein feeds for animals let's come to what you call as carbohydrates what do animals get from carbohydrates and which are the sources of animal carbohydrate feeds we quote what you call as carbohydrates carbohydrates carbohydrate feeds that is carbohydrate feeds so importance what are the importance of carbohydrates of this are one provision of energy provision provision of energy and then number two to provide warmth provide provide warmth so those are the major, major example uh, importance of carbohydrates to the animals let's look at the examples where do animals get this type of nutrients from their feeds and from which type of feeds are these immediately this one is coming from nebia grass nebia grass is a very good example number two we have molasses molasses is under concentrates but still we get it from uh, we get it in what you call as carbohydrates we have the maize jam although maize jam also may have some protein but also it contains some carbo uh, carbohydrates maize jam and many others we can get what you call as carbohydrates lastly we have what you call minerals 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 for the animals majorly is to protect importance is importance importance is to protect protect the animal animal from diseases and also to make the bone strong diseases and and making making the bones strong where do we get these sources which are the source the source of this mineral is we have what we call the salt leak salt leak then number two it it can also come from the uh, grasses grasses and fruits so those are the examples of those are the examples of minerals for animals we summarize by looking at what you call vitamins vitamins are animal feeds which are got from fruits and that one is the end of our lesson done by Vitalis Makanda we meet in the next episode thank you